Hey everyone, I want to share an interview with you I did the other day. I'm in Mexico right now, and the other day I did an interview to tr in Truth and Liberty. They had me on a live call-in show for one and a half hour, where I really got the opportunity to share a lot. That is uh, Truth and Liberty is part of the Walmart ministry. And I want to share the whole interview with you in the full link. It was one and a half hour where the first half hour I was sharing and then there was people who could call in and we could talk about many things. I think this uh, interview is very important. I did not only talk about my experience with jail and FBI and Homeland Security, but I talked about that and I talked about new things you have not heard about before when it comes to my case. But I also got the opportunity to really talk about what we as believers need to understand when it comes to persecution and what I believe God is going to do in the future when it comes to persecution. And there were so many things that have been shared and I know the Richard, the guy who was interviewing me, he said afterward it was one of the best programs he's felt he had done. And I've got a really amazing feedback and response for this program for those who saw it on their platform but now i have the opportunity to share it here on our youtube channel i encourage you to see it it's one and a half hour and i believe this is going to bless you i at the same time want to say i'm excited to be out i'm as i said in mexico right now to be on the mission field again sharing jesus but I'm also excited to be able to do those interviews. And I want to do more of those interviews and more is coming out. If you are sitting there and you want to do an interview with me about my case and those things, you're welcome to reach out to me also and uh, we can talk more about it. You can find more information about my case, the persecution I experienced and what God has shown me those 412 days in prison on our website torbensondergaard.com This is torbensondergaard.com But here I want to uh, give it over to the interview that was sent the other day. I believe this is going to bless many of you. God bless you. Bye bye. That. Let me go ahead and introduce our guest for today. I'm really excited about today's show. My, my special guest is a man who is in a, a modern day book of Acts uh, evangelist, some might even say apostle. Uh, Torben Sondergaard is from the nation of Denmark, and uh, he has built a worldwide ministry built on Book of Acts style evangelism with healings, signs, wonders, casting out devils, just uh, demonstrations of the spirit and of the kingdom of God. And uh, he's, his ministry spans into 30 different nations. And uh, Torben, you know, remember, if you read the Book of Acts, how the apostle Paul his reputa reputation be began to precede him uh, when when he went to uh, it was either Ephesus or or uh, Thessalonica, one of these towns where the people said this is the one who's causing trouble and turning the world upside down, and riots would break out. Well, Torben Sondergaard is a lot like the Apostle Paul because he was upsetting the devil so much that the authorities in Denmark began to persecute him, and his story from that point on a few years ago to the present day is one. One that you will not want to miss because he ended up in jail. Guess where? Not in Denmark, but in the United States of America. So I want to welcome now to the show Torben Sondergaard, uh, one of my new heroes. Torben, thank you so much for joining me on today's program. Thank you for having me. And, and it's nice to be on this side <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> instead of being in jail. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Torben, um, we we had your attorney on our show last. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was April or May, and uh, some of our viewers might remember that episode. She did a fantastic job, but you were in jail at the time in the United States in Florida, and could not come on the show. Uh, but you were released from from jail in August of 2023. And so I just want to bring you, I wanted to bring you on the program today to tell your story again uh, from your own mouth and also uh, to possibly so that our viewers could understand, you know, a lot of things. Number one, what's happening in the, in the area of religious freedom and also how they can be a part of what you're doing and how they can stand up uh, for freedom uh, for others. But be, before we go there, let me just give some background on you a little bit. You started a ministry called The Last Reformation. Can you tell us about your ministry a little bit? 
Yeah, we uh, we need discipleship and and uh, we need to equip people to really be workers in the harvest. Jesus said, "Come and follow me, and I will make you fish of men." And he walked with them, and he discipled them, and he showed them how to live the life. And and in the book of Acts, we see the Holy Spirit just came, and and they continued the work of Christ. And and what we have seen is it's not enough we just talk about it or dream about it or read about it. We we really need to do it. And this is mm. some of the things we have been training and encouraging thousands, uh, thousands of people all over the world to, to do it, where we take them by the hand and say, come, now we go out on the street, we find our personal peace, or we go to a household and you, we preach the gospel and cast out demons, he heal the sick, baptize people in the bathtub and, and set up fellowships. And, and, and when people have first done it one time, they know they can do it and then they continue. And, and, and because of that, because of the practical application, it has really grown all over the world and, and people are running with it now and, and it's really beautiful. So, so it's to equip people to live as disciples and, and help churches and, and set up new fellowships. So it's beautiful. Well, Torben, <clears throat> most people, when they hear about um, you know, evangelists and so on doing Book of Acts work and ministry, they don't typically think of Western Europe, right? Uh, many, you know, Western Europe is in a desperate condition spiritually. Uh, there are relatively speaking, there, are, there aren't very many spirit filled Christians, um, but God raised you up and the work that you were doing caused, as the book of Acts says, no small stir. Can you tell us what happened to you in Denmark and, and what led up to you uh, coming to the United States a few years ago? Yeah. We in, in uh, 2019 had a training school in, in Denmark and we had students for 30 nations at the time, uh, all the time coming and getting trained. And, and then suddenly persecution really start to, to come in a way we haven't seen before. So in, in January of 2019, I was on national TV like almost every day for three weeks. But together with that, we, we saw, they started to talk about changing the laws and, and wanted to do what we call a mental violence law, where how do you define me me mental violence? If, if you physically hit somebody, you know you have done something. And, and in all of that discussion, that's, they start to talk about that mental violence could be cast out demons in front of people. Mental violence could be like doing the ministry, Jesus called us to. And they start to come after our kids and, and, and the government and many things happen. And, and I actually ended up leaving Denmark and coming to America. To be honest, it was not to seek asylum in the beginning, it was to just come away. And, and, and I hope somehow when I was out of the country, it would just fall down and they would somehow forget me. But a few months later, they passed a law in Denmark that did that if we do the work of, of discipleship, cast out deems the way I've been doing it, it, it can actually, you can go to jail for, for mental mm -hmm. violence. And, and I want to say before I continue, you know, the world are changing. And, and I think, I know of other ministries and other people who have had problems with government and so on, but it was because they did something wrong. And there's no blessing in being persecuted for doing wrong. And I thought I was safe because I was not doing like them. And, and I think many people have that mindset, well, I'm not doing like that person, that person, that person, so I am safe. But God, the, la the next year, uh, the next few years, start to show me that uh, in the time we are entering into, if we want to obey Christ, none of us is safe. And, and I want to say that there's still freedom in Denmark and every other place to believe everything the Bible is saying, but when we start to obey what it's saying, <clears throat> then is where the problem happens. Like, Paul, why did Paul and Silas go to jail in Ephesus, uh, Book of Acts 16? It was not because they believe in casting out demons, it was because they cast out demons. Mm -hmm. and, and the same way today, um, but we ended up coming to America and, and we applied for asylum. 
uh, like everyone else, and and well, let, and then we. Yeah. Let me interrupt you. Um, I'm I'm sorry, but I just want to make sure everyone understands. So you had a ministry center in Denmark that had been yeah. operating for some time. People coming in, getting trained on how to win the lost and and to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the the media in Denmark, they did a a, a show about you and they they accused you of of crazy stuff. And then um, yeah. they started talking about passing a law banning mental violence. In other words, you that's obviously going to be when you say something to someone that they don't like, right? Or that they claim hurts them mentally, then that's so-called yeah. violence and they can punish you for it. So, yeah. uh, so you became concerned and actually there were signs that the government was beginning to come after you as they were, if I recall right, they were doing things like uh, sending uh, regulators to your ministry facility looking for yeah. any kind of violation and all kinds of harassment like that. And so you loaded up the family, packed some suitcases and came to the land of the free and home of the brave, uh, the United yeah. States. So, so when you got here in America, what, what happened then? Uh, we, we joined up with some lawyers and we filed our application for asylum like, like you should do and everything looked good and we sent in the papers and we got our receipt and i got our work permit and our social security number our driver license we paid our tax and we did like people should do keep all the rules and was waiting for what is called a is asylum interview where you're calling to talk with an officer asylum officer but it never happened with me, no. Um, instead, after three years waiting, I got a letter and was called into um, Homeland Security in Orlando. I was living in Jacksonville at that time. We had a Bible school there, and, and I started a Bible school in Mexico. And then I came into the interview, and uh, yeah, everything went, uh, <laughs> I would say, some people say wrong for that time. Uh, I came in and they asked me some question. And then at one time, one of the officers, he said, we have heard you are smuggling weapons from uh, Mexico to America. And, and we had a Bible school on the other side on the border and we were living ourselves in San Diego. So, so we had students and staff going over the border. I did not leave America because I did not have to pay us. I was waiting for my asylum into. And uh, no, we are not smuggling weapons like, uh, and when I heard that, I first thought that I've been accused of many things in, in my <laughs> life. And, but I thought that was so far out. So, so no one would take that serious. So I thought I was okay. But the next thing he said was, so therefore you're not going home today. And then he was off the wall, handcuffs off, on, put, in isolate, put in a holding cell. And then they came and put chains around my, my hands and my hip and my feet and took the lease, shoe lease off my feet. And as a hardcore criminal, I was taken to one night to Orange County Jail in Orlando. The next day I was taken up to Baker County Detention Center near Jacksonville. And um, I actually ended up more than a year in that terrible place. And. Um, and it had been some journey, I want to say. And, and I think... Uh, Torben, can you... Yeah. We have a picture on our screen now. It Was this your cell in Baker County? Can you I, see I don't the picture? see a picture now. Oh, no, you can't. I don't see, but, but if you see a picture, my, my cell was a bunk bed uh, on one side. There, yeah, I see it. Yeah, home sweet home. Uh, it was a picture I found on the internet, and it's exactly that cell. Uh, style um, exactly no. like that. One bed on one side, a shower with coal and hot, and then a toilet and a mirror and 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 I spent in that one. This is the dorm I was in. I was in the room uh, in up uh, upstairs, uh, door number three. So I spent a little more than I was first ten days in isolation, and then I was one month uh, in another room with hardcore criminal. Uh, murders, people who have been murdered, uh, uh, killed people, and yeah, been jailed for 10, 20 years. And then I, I got to another dorm, you saw the picture of, and in that cell there, I spent uh, more than a year. So all in all, 412 days. 412 and so I've been days. There. 
and and during this time, you were never charged with a crime. Is that right? No, and it, it's so weird everything because I, I came in and we of course expected me to come out on a bond uh, because I have done nothing wrong and I, I there was different things you needed to do to come out on a bond. But when I finally, after a long time, came in front of a judge after two months, the judge says, it's not my table, and he told me back to ICE uh, immigration. And why, like, why? And, and ma many things did not make sense. And there, it took maybe three months, four months, I found out that the reason I never had an option to go out on a bond was because they put me up as a national threat. And when my lawyers tried to get our papers, why I was in jail, it was like we got four pieces of paper where it's adopted all of it almost. There was like black, 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 one line, black, 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 one line. And every time we try to understand why I was in prison, what I've done and why I could not come out on a bond, the answer we got is, it's a national threat. We cannot tell him it's this a national threat. Okay, so folks, um, we're, uh, my guest today on the show is Torben Sondergaard, an evangelist and missionary and uh, some would say apostle from Denmark who came to the United States of America seeking asylum because of persecution in his home country of Denmark. When he applied here, he was arrested, uh, uh, accused, not, not legally, but by the arresting authorities, accused of, of gun smuggling of all things with no evidence, no facts, no basis. And he was never once given a day in court to defend the allegations or to, to cross-examine witnesses or given any form of due process uh, or explanation for why he was there. Just told he was a, this evangelist is told he's a national security threat. And he's held in jail for 412 days. This is the United States of America, folks. This is not some banana republic, communist country or something like this. And uh, so, Torben, um, you, you're in jail with these with murderers, uh, people guilty of violent crimes, drug offenders, all these kinds of things. And you uh, tell us uh, what happened. Um, for, for more details, everybody, you can go back and, and look at his uh, his the lawyer's interview that they gave on Truth and Liberty back last mm -hmm. April or May. Uh, but Torben, what happened after 412 days? First, I want to say uh, uh, the national threat thing. Later, the, the the thing that came up was human trafficking, and I, we sh we had a Bible school in North Carolina, and now we were being accused for doing human trafficking there. So it was not just one thing. It was like what we saw in Denmark, like accusation upon accusation, but never anything like innocent onto proven guilty. Like it was almost like guilty without any proof. Um, while all of this legal matter was happening outside, I was in jail. <laughs> and, and I would say the shock was, was very hard because I didn't understand it. Like, I know I'm not done with the smuggling. I never have anything to do with human trafficking. <laughs> I know uh, one of some of the things that came up later, like I should have overstayed my visa. I did not do that. And, and things did not make sense. Um, so I was there with with murders with with people. At one time, I, I shared a, a cell with four people. Where one guy he had murdered a, a, he, a, a homeless guy, another guy under me in the bed under me. He had put a knife in the back on his boss, and and people have tattoos all over the body, and and, and it was a different, you know. I be, I became a Christian when I was eighteen. I I haven't thought or drink or anything, girls or anything like that since I became a Christian and got married. So it was a very different environment. And there were some tough guys and, and it was hard, hard. And I want to say, I experienced a lot of persecution, but after one and a half months, I was really a bad place. Uh, I was depressed. I would say that I was really, really depressed. I did not understand it. It was just hard with that orange jumpsuit and the food through the hole in the door and the issues and the shouting and the yelling. And there, there is a picture of, of me. Um, yeah. And it was, it was just the shock was there. And 
I studied the word, and, and of course, I knew what the Bible was saying, and Jesus in Matthew 10 said, when they arrest you, and so on. And I read book of the heavenly man, and brother John, and China, and studied mm -hmm. revival, but I want to say it's one thing to read about it, it's something else to actually live it. Mm -hmm. But then God came. Uh, I got a strong dream from God, from somebody from outside who sent me a dream, and God started to speak to me, and I started to fast. And I, I started 10 days just water, but then I became sick because of the water is not good. And I continued just eating a little, little every day, and I actually continued for many days just eating a little. I ended up 65 days like that. And I started to train my body, lost uh, 40 pounds, uh, train my body, get focus back again where it belong, the word of God, study. And I actually saw revival in jail. It was like God came at one time. It was like people start to get born again, set free. I baptized in a short period of time, six people in my dorm, they were, like my cell. It was like a cup of water over the head, hands on them, got the Holy Spirit set free. Amen, amen. And then in and took a shower. That was the only thing option we had. But and then we started Bible study. So in that dorm, you saw a room or a picture of before. I don't know if you can get it in where you see all the, the cells. In that dorm, out of 25 inmates or 28 inmates, mates, we had 22 in Bible study every day. And because oh we, we started in the main room you see in the middle, but then persecution came because there was a few people who did not want it. But then we started to do what we really call cell church, <laughs> cell groups. We, I had a few disciples I have led to God. I trained in the mornings and then in the afternoon, they did it in Spanish in the different cells. So I was walking around in the dorm every afternoon and looking into the cells and asked, are you good? And, and 22 people was doing Bible studies and life got changed. And, and, and before I got released, I have so many stories. A man came to my cell and I was crying. I said, Tom, you cannot leave us. You cannot leave us. You have changed my life. You have changed everyone's life here. We can't, you cannot leave us. And he was crying. And one time I have a Muslim, Muslim guy come into my, my cell and he looked at me and said, Tom, I, I see a glory over your face. Like, what is that? And then he looked at me. Yeah, I know it. You have been with God. And then the day after, he came into my cell again and said, Tom, why are you so happy? Like, you should not be happy. You're the one who has been here longest now in, in this dorm I was in. And then he looked at my bed. Ah, it's because you read the Holy Word of God. Mm -hmm. And then Muslim ended up getting my Bible and started to read that. Like, I saw God move. Wow. But it did not start there. It, it started with, with a depression, to be honest, because there was things I needed to learn. And, and in all of it now, I see that God spoke to me that persecution right now is the few, but soon it will be the many, but it will end up becoming everyone who confess Jesus as Lord. And, and it's not something that will go away. The only way to get it to go away is by, by us starting to compromise our faith. Mm. No. We should not be fearful, but we should be prepared to be ready for it and know how to stand in it. And I wrote two books in jail. Um, I actually have one of the, the books here on a piece of paper with coffee all over. And I wrote it on a security pin like this. I use 30 of those. Uh, I cannot, you cannot kill anyone with this pain. Like if you try, it just <laughs> yeah. pain. So, so, right. so that was how I wrote two books and saw revival. Wow. And, and God did amazing things at the same time. And, and it's for sure the best Bible school. I don't want to do again, but but it, it was it was good. And I, I'm happy today. I did not come out in the beginning because then I would have come out full of depression and fear and anxiety. But instead, I came out after one year with faith and hope and, and say, guys, it's time to wake up because persecution are coming to America. Wow, that's amazing, amazing. Well, folks, my guest right now is Torben Sondergaard, and uh, we're just now beginning to um, hear his story. And if you want to be a part of today's show, 
ask Torben a question or comment or chime in or whatever, we would love to hear from you. And the number is on the upper right hand part of the screen now. Just please feel free to call that number 719-619-2341. We do have callers on the line right now. And we're going to get to them uh, after the break. Uh, but we, we are coming up on a break here in just a couple of minutes. But um, first, Torben, I want you, uh, if you would, to um, share with me what are some of the things, just uh, I'm going to have to interrupt you, I'm sure, but uh, for our break, but what are some of the things that you learned through your experience other than that we are facing persecution and that it's increasing? The kingdom of God. We need to get the focus on the kingdom of God. The new heaven and new earth, it is going to come down here, and that is good news. And if it was just this life alone, Paul, he said, let's eat and drink because tomorrow we are going to die. And why put ourselves in danger if it's just this life? And, and for me, I, 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 I lost in that sense, one of, more than a year of my life being in a small two, uh, two, a small cell. But for the sake of eternity and the kingdom of God, I was blessed uh, because I have a treasure in heaven and, and God did a lot. So it's, it's really to get our eyes on the kingdom of God. And I learned a lot about that, that uh, your kingdom come and your will be done. And the more my eyes got on that, the more freedom I experience now. Mm. Uh, and, and that was what I experienced. I truly experienced a freedom. At, at, at after maybe a half year, it really came to me where I had a time where I was laying in my bunk bed and worshiping Jesus and say, thank you for bringing me here. Because I, 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 saw, I saw my short suffering in a much bigger and greater light. And, and, and that is what one of my books is about. That is called the kingdom, <laughs> the kingdom book. Uh, so wow. that, that was one thing I, I learned. And, um, and also to see God's hand in it. Like um, I read uh, uh, a quote from Brother Young for the heavenly man. I really recommend that book. Mm -hmm. And he had another book, and he said that no children of God is ever going to be put in jail unless God have a purpose and a plan for it. And, and I see that now. It was difficult in the beginning because I just felt it was so hard. Um, and I saw the enemy's hand in it. But we can also see the enemy's hand in Jesus, crucifying, uh, Jesus being crucified. Yes. But even it was the hand of the enemy, it was still God's will. That, that happened. And, and I believe there's freedom. Jesus died for our sin and our sickness, and there's freedom in him. But persecution is, is not something Jesus died for to take away from us. Persecution yes. is part of following Christ. And, and, and we need to divide those things and, and understand what persecution is and suffering is. And, and I think in the Western world especially, we are not prepared for that. Uh, I know I was okay. not prepared for that. No, yeah. I, I totally agree with you, but let's stop for just a second and we're going to take our first break of the program. Folks, we're going to share some important information with you about truth and liberty and upcoming events and we'll be right back in about 90 seconds. Hey, you know, a big part of what we do here at Truth and Liberty is to provide you with the resources that you need in order to stand for truth in the public square. So I want to remind everybody to go to our website and check out our resources page at truthandliberty.net slash resources, where you can find material that discusses just about every issue we're facing today in our culture. And these are things that are prepared by our strategic partners and some of the uh, most influential and important organizations in America today. Andrew has many conferences and seminars around the globe each year. For the latest information on Andrew's complete speaking schedule, visit our website at awmi.net slash events. You were created with a purpose. Written in the heart of God. Long before you were born, He is calling you to find it. We want to help you experience His unconditional love, to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer. 
Okay, well, we're back here now on the Truth on Liberty live call-in show, and thank you so much for watching, all of you. Our guest today is Torben Sondergaard, and if you were with us in the first half hour, you heard Torben talk about how he was uh, being persecuted in his home country of Denmark and fled to the United States, applied for asylum, and then uh, was secretly arrested by the United States Department of Homeland Security, put in prison for 412 days with no hearing, no trial, no charges being filed against him and uh, became depressed, uh, probably confused. But then the Lord began to move and to minister to him and revival broke out in his dormitorium, dor dormitory, Dory there at Baker County Detention Center in, in, uh, in Florida, and just an amazing work of God. Now, Torben, um, that is incredible. Let me ask you this. W were you able to communicate with your family at all during this time in jail or with your ministry leadership? What did you do to stay in touch with the outside world? Yeah, I... I, there was a phone, and of course, we can call out when it was. Uh, my family did not visit me because we were afraid, uh, because what would happen with them? Uh, and there, there was a lot of lack of communication in the beginning because my legal team did not want to speak to me over the phone so much. And, and I did not understand in the beginning why, because like, hey, I'm here, speak to me. But, but it was first like after, I think, 10 months, I got a, a letter from our lawyer about uh, some, one of the officers who actually detained me and his involvement in it. And when I saw this, I was really shocked. And I, I found out that, that the people who have actually put me in jail was a big reason for bringing me there. Uh, for example, we have a witness statement who is testifying that, that the guy who arrested me was actually the guy who called a civilian on the outside and asked them to report me to Homeland Security for human trafficking so he can come on my file, so he can put me in as an astronaut threat. Wow. So he was so actually an uh, uh, inside job, as I see it. And, and, and uh, I'm still waiting for an investigation to be done. And I know it went to, to uh, the Congress where... Clay Higgins from Louisiana, congressman, he brought it up and said that that I was being persecuted because of my faith. And and I, as I understand, they've used more than 400 hours on my case. So so it became a big case uh, where the director of Homeland Security, FBI, or some of those people involved in, in America know about my case. So it is scary, to be honest, uh, to, to see some of the corruption and, and see what is happening. And because of that, there was not a lot of information because they actually did not trust anything. Mm. And uh, so it was very limited with, with uh, information and, and with visit come in and meet me. Well, Torben, I want to pick up on, your, on where we are in the story uh, in just a minute. But let me remind our viewers that you can call in with qu questions or comments for Torben Sondergaard. The number's on the screen, 719-619-2341. Uh, and uh, I want to go now to our first caller, and it's Allison from Alabama, a Truth and Liberty partner. Allison, thank you so much for your partnership with Truth and Liberty. What is your question for Torben Sondergaard today? Well, thank you, Torben, for your faithfulness. But um, this is a different subject. Do you know that King Arthur is barring, is banning people from white people from their baking contest it's wrong to exclude people on the basis of race and i'm no longer going to buy king arthur products or king arthur mm. flour and um i think this racism needs to be opposed and well I'm, I'm i'm not going to disagree with you i don't know what that is though king arthur is that a brand of baking material Oh, King Arthur makes flour, bread flour, ah. all kinds of flour. And okay. it's a big contest. It's, if you go to the King Arthur website, you can see they're having this big contest um, and with a big prize and apprenticeship, mentoring, and, and it says people of color only. Okay. But, but, but if you look at the world today, it, there is just so many things that is upside down. Like uh, the borders in America, there's a lot of discussion about that with the, 
millions of people who are walking illegal over the border and, and, and what is happening. At the same time, I'm filling out my papers and I'm sitting in jail. And, and, and most of those people I was with in jail, uh, I would say 80% of those people I was with was from Latin America and they got deported and they were back in America after, after a few months. There was actually people in my jail who got deported out and then three months later, they were back in the same jail and said, well, well, hey, you were here a few months ago. What are you here? Oh, I got back to, to America and to Mexico and then I walked over the border again and now they arrest me and then sent back. And, and then they would continue doing the same. So, so there's a lot of things that seems unfair and, and I think this is the time we're living in. Uh, truth become lies and good become evil and, and, and uh, it's how it is, but we need to stand up as a church, for sure. Right. Well, Allison, thank you for your call. I uh, appreciate you voicing that concern, and uh, we stand with you in prayer about that situation. Uh, Torben, you, um, you were saying that the Lord, you believe, showed you that persecution, increased persecution is coming to the United States. Um, tell us about that. How did the Lord reveal that yeah. to you, and what have you seen? It started back in Denmark because I was I was shocked that what I experienced in Denmark could happen. I have always been proud of being Danish and had a Danish passport, and I've been traveling across five nations. and And if people have said to me a few months before, uh, Torben, one day you will need to flee your country for persecution, I would have said no, not in Denmark, not me. Uh, maybe other people who do crazy things, but not me. I'm a nice guy and I serve Jesus, and, but it happened. And when I was in the airport in the Netherlands flying to America back in 2019, I was in shock that it, it happened. And I was like, God, how can this happen? And there came strong to me, Tom, I've sent you to America to prepare my people for what is coming because my people are not ready for it. And then in America, I've been doing ministry and preaching and preparing people for persecution. And then we ha had the whole thing with, with COVID. Then we had the election. And, and, and I saw the same spirit that was working in Europe, the Antichrist spirit that is working on fear, 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 and fear. It was the same spirit we saw under Hitler in Germany with Goebbels, Goebbels his propaganda chief, how he used the media to get the Norman German to kill or give the neighbors over to be killed. Uh, fear, fear, and fear. And, and it was the same spirit I saw working in America. And I've been preaching, pre be prepared. It's happening in America, but I almost felt like, sorry to say it, but people in America was a little like, it's still America, land of the home, <laughs> in a free, uh, land of the free home of the brave. Uh, but then with COVID and election, I saw more people start to wake up. And then it's like God put, I got in jail, where now it's not just a, a message, it's really I became a statement. I became, it came up to the Congress in America, where they said, this is happening in America. I, a legal Danish immigrant came, seek asylum, kept everything, and now he's in jail. So my message have maybe just be stronger, uh, that it is happening and it's coming not only to America, but all over the world. Um, the problem with, uh, not the problem with America, but who's going to save Europe this time? You know, mm -hmm. under Hitler and Second World War, we had the France and the English people coming in, and then America came and helped, and the Russian on the other side. But, but who's come, going to come and help this time if America is falling? So I really believe it's time for America to wake up. It's really time to take our faith serious and, and understand that Puskus is coming. It's not going to go away, but we can grow in it. We can learn through it. We can see revival through it if we understand how it works. So, so this is, yeah, some of my message. So uh, if I understood you earlier, you said that you, uh, you have evidence that an officer with the um, uh, American security, so that'd be Homeland Security, actually contacted someone on the outside and encouraged that person to assert false claims against you for human trafficking and arms smuggling. Mm -hmm. And what, my question, Torben, is 
what motivation would that uh, Homeland Security officer have? I mean, what could it be except anti-Christian bigotry? I, I have a paper here with a lot of things, witness statement and things we have found out where we have a, we want answers. <laughs> what is happening? And, and I hope we will get some answers soon and there will be some investigation that will happen there. What, how we understand with him is, to be honest, I, as I understand, is that he's a Christian. He is uh, somehow a believer who got convinced that I am an antichrist guy who probably, I don't know so much about his faith, but I believe in speaking tongues, I believe in healing the sick, I believe in the work of the Holy Spirit like we read in the Bible. And if you're a sensationist and don't believe in that, and that is for today, it's so easy to be put in a box as a false prophet that just needs to be destroyed. So, so this guy, as we understand, was communicating, and that is the scary thing, with the people who was behind the persecution in Denmark. And we also know who that is. I have a timeline on a website we are done called TorbenSonderGuard.com. Uh, and on, there's a timeline where different names comes up, and there's a link here, and you can see a timeline with every event that happened. For example, when I fled Denmark coming to America, one of the guys behind the prosecutors in Denmark, he wrote an email to me. Finally, I will get you. You are going to America and I will finally destroy you and get you to jail. And wow. he wrote that to me in 2019. And um, he, he got me to jail through his contact and through the government in America. And that show a little about the corruption that is happening. But he did not destroy me. And I believe no, persecution is coming, but I don't think persecution can destroy the real church. But 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 this is real. And and in the timeline you see all the details and and I had some scary moments like the last week before I was finding out, they took me two officers into a room and recorded me and gave me some papers and I was not allowed to talk with my lawyer. They were lying in my face, they were trailing me, they were recording on a camera. And they said, you need to sign now. And I said, I have a lawyer calling two hours. Give me three hours and I, I, I can sign. I just need to talk with my lawyer. No, we are tired of you. We are tired of, of, of your timeline. It's our decision now. It's our timeline. And then they were lying and said that I have said things to my lawyer I have not done. And, and they wanted me to, to sign the papers. And it was papers that actually was trading me with up to 10 years prison if wow. I did not do what they said and and it was really I was crying I was like what is happening here like and and um, so, so there was experience there was moments in the in the middle of the revival in the middle of the beautiful thing God was doing that, that that seemed like a third world country uh, and not like America at all wow so what um uh, what are what advice do you have, brother, for people who are watching today about this persecution that you believe is coming? Um, how do we prepare for it? How do, should a believer, how can a believer endure persecution? And, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to take the form of being arrested and thrown no. in jail, although that's possible. But we get persecuted in all kinds of ways. Uh, perhaps it's on yeah. the job. Perhaps yeah. it's in our families or in other ways. But how should a believer, um, uh, you know, how can we stand against persecution? Yeah. Uh, if I go back to the beginning, uh, I was 10 days in isolation in the beginning when I came into Baker County and, and with a cell with, without anything, like no phone, no Bibles, nothing to write on. And it was, it was really, truly hard. I've never been in a place like that in my life. And, and I was sitting down and like, okay, the Bible and, and try to memorize and remember what I have read. But, but my mind was just plain all over. But after three days, somebody brought me a little old King James Bible I have here, little mm -hmm. black one. And, and I'm not good at reading English, especially not King James. But when I got that Bible, I was like, mm, kissing it, hugging it. And, mm. and I just started to read the Bible. And even there, 
I experience of freedom. And it's really coming through the word of God. It's coming to understand the call Jesus had given us. Like when he called Paul, he, he said, I'm going to show him how much he's going to suffer for my name's sake. And then Paul, it was part of his job. When you read how he was put in jail, like we, we see we we see Silas and, and, and Paul in Book of Acts 16, how God just delivered them from jail and the house and the, the jailer and his household got baptized. But later in Book of Acts, Paul was not delivered. He went two years in house arrest. Why? Why why did King Felix, why did they put him in jail? Because he needed to go to Rome. Why did he not come out of house arrest? Because he needed to write Ephesus and Philippians and, and Colossians. We have not had those letters today if God has set him free the same way as he did in Book of Acts 16. Mm. So, so it's not the same thing that has happened every time. So, but we need to understand there is a purpose with it. There is no blessing in suffering for doing wrong, as the Bible said. But if you suffer for righteous sin, say, you are blessed. And, mm. and so it's about understanding what the word is saying about suffering and, and the kingdom of God, as I said before. And in the midst of suffering, when Paul said in Philippians uh, 4, rejoice always, I say again, rejoice. He, and he was not living an American dream at that time when he wrote that. He was actually sitting in jail when he wrote that. <laughs> so, so when you read Philippians, also in chapter 2, he said, with your prayers, it will end with my deliverance. But if you then look at, then he continues, if life is Christ, death is gain. So when you read the context, you don't know, Paul, what kind of deliverance were you seeking? Because there's two ways you can be delivered for jail. One, you can be put out of jail and you're free. Second, you can die and you're free. Mm-hmm. And, and in Paul's letter, he, he, he was waiting to be delivered, but it was not clear which one with deliverance and if we get our focus on the kingdom of god and the resurrection from the dead and the eternal blessing suffering will not do so much to us but Mm. if we only focus on this present aids and the pain right now it is terrible it hurts Mm. and you miss out a lot of things so it's really to get our focus the right place and that is through the word of god as i know you're doing a lot of Amen. Amen. Well, you know, the Lord has redeemed us from the curse of the law, but he has not redeemed us from persecution um, and the, the opposition of the, of the devil and the spirit of Antichrist. The Satan works through people, and that's mm-hmm. what persecution is. As Satan is trying to halt the word of God, he's always come for the word. He's always been after the word. And, um, and so, you know, in fact, the more vocal you become, the more fruitful you become, the more of a target you become uh, to the devil. So, um, um, Torben, let's, let's get back to your story, if we can. Um, you obviously are not in jail now, uh, and you, you, got, you, you got released in August of last year. How did that happen? Did it come suddenly? And, and tell us about that. No, it, we, we, were, we were fighting. Everything with my case is weird because I, when I, I, I went for the immigration judge, there was five people in that court case. It was online. It depicts you see me with the orange suit you have there. There was actually a recording from my court case there. The judge actually let one person in to that court case who should not have been be there, who was one of my enemies, who recorded the court case illegal and put it on YouTube. Yes, so my case that. was suddenly all over YouTube. And again, that had never happened before that why do a judge? Why can judge not, he only had five people he needs to keep his eyes on. Why, why do he let somebody in who's not part of the court case? And where did he get the phone number to call in? There's a lot of questions to answer here, mm-hmm. uh, to ask. Um, so, so everything was weird and I felt the immigration court never really gave me any chance and then we we applied for the federal court where it's running right now and there we found out that there was actually a chance that i could be deported and then still win my case later and and there when that happened we actually prayed for that like hey i would rather fight outside than fight inside 
and and then it ended up that I actually I, I applied for an option to come out and fight or be deported and fight, and then I was de deported and fought here. And right now I'm actually in Mexico. I came to Mexico a few days ago where we are doing some mission work. Um, but then I came out, uh, two officers as a dangerous person took me over, over JFK airport. There I was put in jail again in the airport for five hours while I was waiting or four hours. And then two officers on each side uh, deported me back to Denmark, gave me over the, to the police. But again, I was not charged for anything in Denmark. The prosecution is, is if I continue doing the work of ministry because the law was put in place after I left um, but I just turned around in the airport and went to Germany, where I met my family who flew from America to Germany. And, and I would say that was the greatest moment in my life when I yeah. was in the airport and uh, mm. met my wife. I bet it was. So 412 days in jail, uh, yeah. not knowing what was going to become of you. And then all of a sudden you are standing face to face with your family. And uh, that must yeah. have been quite, quite a moment. Um, and so what what have you been doing since your release last August? You mentioned, of course, some time to rest and recuperate and spend time with family. How is your ministry doing now, Torben? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very uh, proud of people out there. Like the last three years while I was in America, we had Bible school in 30 other countries. And, and I was not doing one of them. So people keep running and... And I actually saw me being in jail had really given, it's so interesting, Paul, he said that also in Philippians, like by him being in jail, a lot of people have got even more boldness to preach without hindrance. And, and that is the same thing we saw, me being in jail actually brought boldness to other people out there wow. to proclaim Christ. So in that way, I've grown a lot, actually. God has done beautiful things. Uh, we have suffered when it comes to finances a lot. Uh, there was an extra burden because it just, it cost extremely much. And people were so and thankful for everyone who had been giving out there. And people gave to us and to, to me. But that meant that the ministry actually ended up losing a lot of money because people gave to me and it went to pay the judge, the, the lawyers, instead of going to the, the work of the ministry. So in that way, we have suffered a lot, and, and it's still hard today. Uh, we still have some bills we are behind also with the legal matter. So I want to be bold if people want to donate to, to the cause. You can do that through, to thomasthenagard.com. Um, but otherwise, it's good. God is working through all of it. So, uh, now, folks, I just want to encourage you right now, go to Torben's website. Uh, put that up there, guys, if we could, torbensondergaard.com. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, he's in prison for over a year, I think for 14 months. And um, people, he's saying people were generous to support his legal fees, although that still is not paid off either, I imagine. And, and uh, it sounds like you're not done. Uh, with your legal fight. Someone needs to answer for what's happened here. But, but even still, your ministry suffered tremendously because you weren't out there able to minister and do your work and communicate with your partners and everything else. So I think, you know, we ought to, we ought to give uh, today to help you. And if, uh, if we could put that on the screen again, because the spelling is a little bit different for us here in the U.S. Sondergaard is S-O-N-D-E-R-G-A-A-R-D. So TorbenSondergaard.com. Let's, uh, let's help out a brother here in a, in a well-deserved, um, situation. Well, Torben, um, uh, what are your future plans here? I'm, I know your asylum application is pending, but what about ministry? What do you feel like God has put on your heart to do now? I still, just before I got detained, I, I got in contact with a pastor, a good friend in, in California, and, and I was supposed to help him in his church and really work with the churches in America. I I got a big heart for the churches, and I believe still I will come back and do that one day. Okay. But on to then, God have called us to Latin America, and and we actually just came to Mexico a few days ago, and then we'll be here and work here for a month, and then go South America and Central America, and really work on the Latin uh, American countries, uh, and and this is next season. 
but there, there's something special with America for me. I, I really see the church in America. You know, the whole world look at America and look at the churches and what is happening. And, and I, I believe God wants to do something beautiful there. Mm. So, uh, so I'm in Mexico and I'm excited for this new season here until that day. Hopefully, I will, uh, the truth will come out here and I'll get my papers. The, my, my stuff is in a container. In, we live out of uh, four suitcases. Uh, we have done that a half year now. So, so it's, it's still a little hard to, it's, it's okay. We have done, I, I said, I came to America with eight suitcases and seeing asylum. I was thrown out with four. <laughs> so it, it, it go down the hill and I don't have a car, I don't have a house to sell, I don't have anything. I came out with $2,000 on a bank account. So, so I'm really, even we have a big ministry, I'm really living in faith again and, and, and out here. And of course, I, I want to see my, my home in a container in, a, in California. But on to then, it's just nice to be on the harvest field again, out amongst people. We just had a cafe, pray for people who met God, and, and uh, out eating here a hour ago. And it's just beautiful to be out again. Torben, have you learned a lot about the subject of religious persecution uh, through this experience, not just on a personal level like you were sharing, but um, is it a growing problem in the world, not just in the U.S. or Europe, but worldwide? Is it a growing problem? It is, and, and I'll say there's different things in it. The, the media, the internet have changed everything because everyone have a voice now, and, and you don't know who's behind that voice. So it's so easy to accuse somebody for something, and even if probably a crazy person who's sitting on the other side, everyone have a voice, and mm. and and that makes it so much more dangerous for, for us, and and especially because there is a mistrust against the Christians. So, so years ago it was not like that, mm -hmm. but now it's really the mistrust is coming. So, it's Christians are being accused of something. It's so easy to. Sadly, also because there's a lot of bad things happening in the church, it's so easy to believe the accusation, like I experienced. Another thing is a whole new word I have learned is lawfare, not mm -hmm. just warfare, but lawfare. How the law is being used now to target believers. And, and they don't come directly. It's not like, hey, it's forbidden to tell about Jesus. It's not how they say it. Why? Because, no, we have religious freedom. So they come with other laws, like, like the whole, uh, the whole uh, mental violence law or the whole thing we heard about with if a baker uh, don't want to bake a cake to a homosexual couple and they go in with the law and say you discriminate people or you do other things and, and this is what we see, like in, in Finland right now, there was just a case that ended with a politician who quoted a romance about the church supporting the gay and the pride, uh, gay and pride thing in Finland. And she just quoted the Bible. And because she quoted the Bible, she was accused of war crimes. So that was what they came after her. So, so it's, it's a different way of it. It's, and, and I think with me, they never said, Torben, we don't like the way you preach the gospel. We don't like the way you make disciples. It would be so much nicer if they said it directly. But instead, we have heard you are doing human trafficking, weapon smuggling, and money fraud, and this and this and this without any charge. So I think there's coming a change in, in the way persecution are being been shown and how yeah. it come to us. And, and we had to really be aware of that. Well, uh, so we're, we are up now, we're well past our break time. I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a minute uh, to uh, share some announcements with our viewers and then we'll be back in about a minute and a half. Don't go away. We've got a lot more to come with Torben Sondergaard. At Truth and Liberty Coalition, we work to unify, educate, and mobilize the body of Christ to change nations. That's why I want to encourage you to go to our website at truthandliberty.net and subscribe so that you can begin receiving regular updates uh, about our show, news items, action alerts, blog posts, and much, much more. Uh, all you have to do is go to the website, click subscribe, share your email address, and you'll begin to be equipped to stand for truth in the public square.
Are you in ministry and want to connect with other like-minded ministers? Andrew Womack founded the Association of Related Ministries International, or ARMY, to serve, equip, and empower you for success in your ministry through relationships, community, and resources. But just being a part of this, uh, being filled with the Word of God and with ARMY, and fellowshipping, knowing that I have other ministers with me, it is awesome. We have met such precious people through ARMY. Uh, there's people I know I can call when I'm in a jam. Ministers have a safe place to come. We can unify and unite for the kingdom. As an ARMY member, some of the benefits you'll enjoy are Bible teaching correspondence courses, regional advocates for personal support and ministry, regional events for networking, one-on-one -on -one ministry and encouragement, our monthly newsletter, and more. You don't have to do ministry alone. Join this growing network of dynamic and elite ministers from across the U.S. and around the world today. Okay, folks, we're here on the Truth and Liberty Live call-in show, and the call-in number is 619-2341, and that's area code 719. Uh, if you'd like to talk to Torben Sondergaard, uh, please call in the number, share your thoughts, comments, questions today. Um, we've been covering so far in the program Torben's journey in an American jail and in a, a, a sort of falling off the radar in sort of no man's land as he was being persecuted because of his all indicators are it was because he's a Christian. There was no legal basis for it. He was falsely accused. And what an incredible work God has done in his heart and in the lives of so many people where he was detained. But you know, that doesn't take away from the fact that what happened to him was wrong and that we need to stand up for freedom and righteousness um, in this nation of ours. We cannot let America go down this path any longer. And uh, Torben, I want you to comment on that further. Uh, but, but before we do, I want to take another call. We've got a call in now from uh, Eloy, who's from the state of Texas. Uh, Eloy, thank you for calling. And what's your question today, sir? Uh, yes, uh, praise the Lord. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And um, I just yeah. want to say a big hugs and uh, from many, many people here in the United States and the state of Texas to Torben. Uh, God has done some great things through his ministry in our lives. And we're very, very grateful for the things that we're, we are seeing. And uh, I just uh, wanted to uh, um, ask Torben to maybe he would give voice a little bit to how Christians should act in an environment where the government uh, and, the, and, and the powers that, are, that be are persecuting actively people. And, and that is in terms of the fruit of God. How do we keep our hearts pure? Do we, you know, because a lot of times people confuse uh, Christianity with taking up arms against and rebellion and all that. So I just thought, give him an opportunity to maybe speak to that. And it's wonderful to see you free, my brother. God's grace be with you. Wow, thank you. Yeah, I would say Jesus' words in Matthew, really, I've been speaking about that many times, be wise as servant and innocent as dove. And, but I, I have a different understanding of it now. Uh, if we start with innocent as dove, um, FBI, as I understood it, took my phone and, and uh, it, it disappeared at one time after I got detained. It was not in my, my property list. And, and I was thinking when I heard that, like, whoa, I know they had my pin code because the one who arrested me saw it when I put it in. And I was thinking, is there anything in my life on the phone that I cannot handle to see that they are flying? Like, and I, I stopped up and I thought, no, I don't. I have nothing. And I'm so thankful for that. But it's only because I years ago experienced the fear of God in my life and really cleaned up my life. So I want to say, be innocent. You have to clean up your life. You have to live a holy life. Mm -hmm. You have to live in a life that people can take your browser, your phone, to go to every page, and you don't live a hidden life in any area because what is done in the hidden will be shouted for the rooftop. Second, be innocent at all. In a white at all, uh, snake, sorry, white as servants. We have to be aware, not be fearful, but be aware. And there we also need to be aware of what fight are we called to go and take. And, and I just see the kingdom of God is very different. Like Jesus was not 
he was creating a riot, but he was not politically active in that sense of doing it. It was the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. I don't say you cannot be politically active at all, but it should not be instead of the gospel. The gospel yeah. is what set people free. And sometimes we are so focused on changing the world in our own strength, in our own power, where we lose the most important weapon we have. That is the word mm. of God, and that is the truth, and that is the gospel. When that is said, I believe there is people who are called to do different place, place of ministry and are sitting in government and other, and I think people need to do their call. But I, we are not going to change this world by laws. Mm. We are going to change, change this world by the gospel that is going to change the hearts of people. And I think we do a mistake if we think that we can change the world's world by putting up more laws. What we get is religious people who look holy on the outside, but inside they are rebellious and full of all bad things as the mm. Pharisees experience. So I'm a simple guy, I believe in Jesus' word, innocent, wise, preaching the gospel, making disciples, and then pray before we go into things to know, is this truly what God has called us to, or are we just following the stream? And, and, and I think that is important. And I've been more, more, not fearful, but more wise in what I'm saying, how I'm saying it, where I'm saying it, and to ask God, God, is this my call or what is it you want me to do? And, and I think everyone needs to ask themselves that. And if you're called into the political round, go for it, do what God has called you to do. But I want to say, everyone, let's follow Jesus, preaching the gospel, making disciples, as we all are called to wherever he has put us. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Great, great answer. You know, uh, here at Truth and Liberty, we're dedicated to the idea that God has called believers into every sphere of human society, uh, everything, including the, not just the church, but business, entertainment, mm -hmm. arts, education, and government. Um, and that yeah. part of the reason that we are uh, seeing what's happening in the world today is because the church has, has uh, we've gone in behind our four walls and we thought, oh, we're just gonna minister to one another. And we yeah. haven't gone out um, and we've neglected government. We've neglected all yeah. these arenas of society. So um, I think there is, the, yeah. the, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, Romans 1, 16. There is no other name under heaven by which men may be saved except the name of Jesus. But the, by the same token, we've got to take Jesus and the light everywhere we go into every part yeah. of human society. Yeah. So, um, Corbin, and, we've- And been, I know, we've, I, 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 yeah, just like, like Clay Higgins from Louisiana, he really yeah. stood up for me. And, and uh -huh. I, I want everyone out there who know him, give him a call, reach out to him and say, keep fighting for me. Because yeah. I almost feel sometimes now I'm out that I'm forgotten. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the case is still running uh, and there's still a lot of things that need to happen. So, so, so I'm, I'm thankful for a guy like him. I'm thankful for those people in position who God yeah. was brought there. But for every one of us, we need to ask why have God put us here and, and what weapons do we fight with in our position? But, but it is beautiful and uh, yeah. Okay, well, let's go to another caller. Uh, Mary from Florida is on the line, has been holding. Uh, so Mary, thank you for calling in and for your patience. What is your question for Torben today? Okay, well, Torben, I just wanted to say that I feel bad this happened to you in Florida. I was praying for you, and I also was emailing DeSantis but got no answer. But anyway, my question is, will you be able to return to the United States, or do you want to now that this has happened? Yeah, about being returned, I, I signed up paper before I was deported. I need to. that The next 10 years, everything I do had to go through Homeland Security. And uh, with everything that was happening there, I am. I have a file that say I'm a national threat. It's still in my files, and and that is the thing I need to clean up my file because it's it's very difficult to do anything when you are a national threat, accused of uh, weapons smuggling, human trafficking, economic fraud, and a long list. 
So, so that fight is still ongoing and my case is ongoing. I cannot do anything else right now than wait for my asylum case to come and wait for Clay Higgins and the government uh, to step in and, and do our investigation of the officer who detained me and what is going on. And I hope this program can help in that sense. Um, coming back to America, um, to be honest, I felt a little like Paul was 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 in, I, I think it's X-13 or where it was in uh, Lustra. He was stoned. And then as soon as he was stoned, uh, they stood around him and prayed. And then he stood up and went back to the city again to preach. I was like, who, who, who gets stoned and then stand up and go back to the same city they got stoned in? To be honest, I feel a little like that. Uh, I, I don't feel safe in America uh, as I did before all of this. Um, but I know God has called me to America. I know there is a work that still needs to be done. And, and one thing my wife always said is that the safest place to be is where God wants you to be. Yes. Uh, so so if, now it's Latin America. If it's America, I will go because he said go. And, and that is the same thing we all need to do. Be in his will. That is the safest place to be. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mary, for calling in. Appreciate your question. Uh, next, let's go to Gladys uh, from Georgia. Uh, yeah, Gladys, you're uh, my notes show you that you're an Andrew Womack Ministries and Truth and Liberty partner. Thank you so much for your support. We do truly appreciate it. What's your question today? Oh, thank you, Brother Harris, for taking my call. How are you? I'm blessed. Thank you. Hello, Brother Tobin. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much, Brother Tobin, for fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, this, when I see the smile on your face, it reminds me of James chapter one, verses two to four. You know, it means you are, you don't have any grudges or any animosity towards the people who did yeah. this to you. That is really good to see you smiling after what you have been through. Thank you, Lord. So my question is, well, I had actually spoken to your lawyer when she was on the show last time, and I was going to ask her this question. Why was your interview not in California where you had applied for asylum? Why did they call you to Florida? Uh, I, I was in Florida first, and I was applying in Florida, and then I actually moved to California to, to do a uh, a mission school there, and and because of that, the the, the case was still uh, being investigated in Florida because I just moved, and and that was why. So uh, so they called me back. We could have moved our case to California, maybe, and and I could end up in prison there instead. Uh, I don't know if that would have been better, uh, but that was the reason uh, that I was in Florida going to California, and then this happened. And, and about the, what you said about smile on my face, you know, um, one strong experience I had in jail was was in isolation. I was reading Roman Genesis, I think it's thirty around there with 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 uh, Joseph in in Egypt when Potiphar's wife wanted to seduce him, and 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 she lied, and she was like. Joseph run away, he fled from sexual sin, as we should do. And she stood there and said, this man, this Hebrew guy you brought in, my, he has tried to rape me. And, and it's all lies. And we know the story, probably all of us, many of most people know the story about how God used that to get him to jail. And then from there, he ended up at a pharaoh. When I read that in jail, I had a moment where I read it, and then it was like, when I read it, what she was lying, accusing him for, it was like a righteousness came over me, and I just felt like, wrong, this is wrong, like, this is evil. And, and it was like, in a second, I almost forgot the rest of the story, and I felt like, God, this is evil, why? Why did you allow this and then i turned the next page and it was like ah hmm. now i know why you allowed it 
because she was the tool God used to get Joseph to jail to meet the servant and the beggar to come in front of Pharaoh to fulfill the call God had given. Mm. The reason we often have problem with understanding things is because we live one pace at a time. When I experienced the false accusation, I was living in that moment and it hurt and it was unrighteous and it was unfair when people lie and do evil things. But when we, God, he didn't live one pace at a time. He know the story, the beginning from the end. And when we understand that, it just gave up freedom. Why should I be bitter of those people who throw me in the pit? Why should Joseph be bitter on his brothers who throw him in the pit? Because it was not just Joseph's brother who threw him in the pit. It was God who used Joseph's brother to throw him in the pit. They threw him in the pit to destroy his dream, to destroy his call. But God, that was their attention. But God used them to actually fulfill his dream and fulfill his call. Mm. So, so I think for all of us, we need to learn right away, even in the small things, to always forgive to never mm. get better, to yeah. always rejoice, even in small things. Because when we are faithful in the small things, we can be faithful in the greater things. So I needed to learn that, but no, I'm not bitter because I'm being blessed in the kingdom because of what God He's doing. And, and I know that everything works for good for those who are calling to His name is called. And I know that God have a plan with it. And I experienced that in jail and I experienced that now and, and in the future. So no bitterness amongst believers. We should forgive and we should rejoice always in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Torben, what, um, what can people do uh, to stand up for religious freedom? Just the average Christian out there or pastors and that sort of thing, uh, how can they make a difference? Um, you know, you, you, the, the Lord called you to come yeah. to America to warn them, warn us about what's coming. Um, what is the point of the warning? Uh, if, if, uh, if we can't change it, you know, what can we do? My call and where I feel like I need to speak is, is really when it comes to following Christ as a disciple and, and be bold. We, if, if the hard persecution is not coming now, we can put it out and it will come later, but we know at one time it will come. Yes. The Bible is very clear. There will be an antichrist, there will be a false prophet, there will be a tribulation, there will be a, a war coming, and everyone, Jesus said, who confess him will be persecuted. And things will happen. So, so it's not something, when we talk about the return of, our Lord Jesus. The focus is not the focus Antichrist and the false prophet. The focus is our Lord is coming back. Come on. Amen. Amen. We should rejoice over that. So I would say what we can do is seek our Lord, see Jesus, and make disciples where we are. This is how we change the world, one person at a time, that we really understand what the gospel is, and, and we, in everyday life, are faithful in the small things. And some people are put in special position and have a special task there. But now I'm talking to most of us, be faithful in the small things. Be faithful with reaching your neighbors. Be faithful in following Christ and making disciples on your workplace. I think this is the thing we can do because it's so easy to, to see that the world is so big and we don't know where to start. Uh, but we start in the small things with what God had put us in. And then he see that we are faithful in those things, and then he can give us a special assignment. And then we need to go and do what he have called us to do as obedient children, and that will look different from person to person. Uh, so, yeah. so how, <laughs> let's talk about winning the loss as we close out the show. Torben, this is what you're gifted at, it's what you're called to do, and you've trained so many people about this, but the, the folks that are watching today, I'd like for you to just take a few minutes and um, teach or encourage or exhort them on how easy it is to actually share the gospel and uh, make a difference in other people's lives around them. 
Yeah, uh, and I'll do that and if you want more on tlrmovie.com. I'll just say that we have three movies out there for free where we share more about it. tlrmovie.com, there is a link there. Yeah. I would say it's the fewest of us who ever stand on a platform in Africa and speak to 10,000 people. That is a part of evangelizing, but there's only a few people who do that. All of us can be like our Ananias in the Bible who found Paul, who was seeking God. And right now there's people like Paul or Saul out there who are seeking God. They have had an experience with God, but they don't know what to do with the experience. And they need somebody who can go to them and say, hey, can we sit down and talk? And I believe the best person to preach the gospel is you who are seeing this. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do it is over a coffee table. Mm. in their house or in your house or on a cafe to really understand what is the gospel and then one person at a time and, and maybe get our eyes away from the big platform ministries and come back to the simple thing like X10, Peter, he got a vision. The Holy Spirit led him to the house of Cornelius and the, the whole household got saved. X16, Paul, he made Lydia and the whole household got saved, or the jailer. And, and it's different things every time. But what you very often see is that you sit down with a person, not a big campaign. That is okay, and we need that. But it's really one to one discipleship where you preach the gospel, and that is repentance from sin toward God. They need to know what sin is so they can repent toward God, baptize into the Son, Jesus Christ, and then receiving the Holy Spirit. And then you start, they start on the narrow road, born again as disciples, and you take them by your hand and show them how to do the same you did with them. And then we start to see multiplication where suddenly we don't have church goers who sit in church frustrated because, like, I also want to be used and waiting for a platform, but we have disciples who every day live on workplace, in Walmart, in cafes, in homes, make disciples, preaching the gospel, and seeing people born again. And this is what our movies on tilamovies.com is, is all about. And we have a lot of equipment and tools for you to use out there. All right, well, everybody, be sure to check out that website at tlrmovie.com. And also wanted to remind everybody before our show ends here today about Torben's website, torbensondergaard.com, where you can go and learn more about what's going on in his ministry and uh, support him uh, with prayer and hopefully uh, financial gifts. Um, and uh, so, Torben, I, I heard just this morning, I think it was, or maybe yesterday, that uh, only 2% of American Christians have ever shared their faith with another person. Uh, does that sound like it's probably true to you? And why are we like that? What has happened to us in America that we no longer tell people about Jesus? You know, we got, when, when we got you five come, minutes. <laughs> but when you come from Europe uh, to America, it's, it's like Candyland in the beginning. You're just like, whoa, street, street church of every street corner and everyone have a faith in Christ. It seems like. And then you peel under the layers and you find out that inside is very different. The problem in America is there is a very strong culture and that culture is is have come in instead of the real disciple life, the real obedience. It's not so much what we believe only, it's what we do. Show me your faith. How do we live the life? And 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 I saw that in America. I, I was surprised. I thought, whoa, they're all Christians, they all love Jesus. The mm. many lift their hands and and worship him, but their life don't testify of uh, obedience, disciple life. So we need to to step down and 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 go back to the foundation. Mm. Jesus said, come and follow me and I will make you fish of man. We are all called here in Christ's place as his body. He's the head, we are the body. It's like Jesus was put here on earth to do the work of the Father and he was obedient to the, to the death of the cross and therefore God had lifted him up. And now he has called us as his body to continue the work of Christ. And what was that? That was walking around led by the Holy Spirit as Jesus did 
healing the sick, casting out demons, making disciples, and being persecuted and die on a cross. And now we as his body should continue that work. And, and I want to say, it's not to just blame you who had amongst those percent who don't do it. Uh, we need discipleship. We need help. And I believe if we at the church start to not just tell people what we expect for them or what the Bible expects for them, but actually show them how to do it. It's so much easier if you take somebody by the hand and say, come, I'm going to go out with you now and show you how to heal a sick or preach the gospel. But I've never done that before. No, me neither. Before first time. Yeah, but I have a lot of fear. Also me. But I need boldness. We all do. But boldness comes by experience. For example, you go up to your job. Every day, you are working on your job. And you are very bold in what you're doing. And then a new person comes in on your job, and you look at that person, and you say, oh, look at that person. <laughs> and you forget you are like him when you started some years ago. What happened? You got experience. And together with experience comes boldness. And, and this is what we need. We need to be more practical in, in what we are doing and take people by the hands and then go out and show them and disciple them. And then I believe we can end up with more than 2% who is preaching the gospel. But mm -hmm. it will be everyone who confess Jesus as Lord out there. Well, let's just, uh, let's just take that. We have two minutes left in the program, brother. And I just want to take that time to pray. Um, and I want to ask everybody yeah. who's watching to pray with us here just uh, two minutes now. And I want to pray for you. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for Torben and what you've done in his life. God, I thank you for I thank you, Lord, that you uh, allowed him to go to jail and, and started a revival there and the things that you've shown him and taught him. And Father, that he's now released. And we pray in Jesus' name, Father, that he would be allowed to return to the United States, that you would grant favor on that asylum application, that he would be able to come here, God, to finish the work that you appointed him to do, and that he would become a voice, God, in this spiritual wilderness, Lord, calling Americans to repent, to be true followers of Christ, God, to be workers of signs and wonders and evangelists, God, to win our friends and our neighbors. Because Jesus, without you, Lord, without the gospel, we, we can do everything we want and it will make no difference. So, Lord, change yeah. America, change the world, Lord. Give us more time, God, to win the lost in this world mm -hmm. before you come. And I pray, God, for favor and power and anointing on this man, God, to finish that work. Let finances flow to him. God, let, money, let, let, let resources and relationships come to him. And I pray, God, for an open door that no man can shut, God, that he can walk through it, Lord, and that he can could become, Lord, everything uh, that he could fulfill, Lord, the, the, the mission that you've given to him to do, because I believe, Father God, that he is not done and that this whole thing is not over yet. I also pray in Jesus' name for his lawyers, God, that they would have wisdom and, and funding, God, to pursue justice in this situation so that your word would be exalted and truth would prevail. Thank you, Lord, for these things in Jesus' name. Well, brother, we are out of time, unfortunately, yeah. but it's been an amazing hour and a half, one of the best I've ever spent. Yeah. And I just and thank, thank you, you so much for everything. Yeah. I want to talk to you uh, more in the future. But thank you, everybody, for watching today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow on the Truth and Liberty live call-in show. Thank you for joining today's Truth and Liberty live cast. You can watch today's and past live casts in our archives at truthandliberty.net. Our goal is to educate Christians and connect them with resources and organizations to help them impact their sphere of influence. You can help us accomplish this by making a donation at truthandliberty.net slash donate. Join us next time for more Truth and Liberty.